most farmers need a level of pest control. Some give others the permission to do the job. Some like doing it themselves, but it is a job. Andy has lost whole fields of wheat to fallow deer, acres of pasture and young crops to rabbits, and pens full of game birds to foxes. Pests reduce revenue, but with considerate control they can be managed, which is what Andy is trying to do this evening. First, a light snag, and Crow turns all poo bear on us. Honeycomb, David. Oh, I am sweet enough. I just didn't know what he wants. Up. I'll take it home here, David, or you're going to eat it here. They started making the comb on a different part of the hive, on the separating bit between. He's got panels in there, and he's just taking that panel out because he don't want them to make it on there. They've got like in there. They've if you know bees, they've got like a rack it's that wide, and they make they have a, a pre-made uh, comb in there, and that's where they make the honey. And then you take take it out in a lump, and it goes into a spinner, and it you spin it, and it separates the honey. And what they've started doing, they've been making their own comb on the actual lid in there, which parts the two different sections. To get between the two sections, they come between. They up, they're getting a bit off from me now. So now's the time to leave. Yeah, don't move too quickly, David. That's, that's it. Andy has always shot Federal bullets, but for this series he's been given one of the new Ticker T3X range with Stalin mod. This is the light barreled version, and he will be shooting 100 grain soft points. First, he needs to double check that the rifle is where he wants it. I have a big problem here with fellow deer eating the wheat. A bit like everyone really eating the wheat. Neighbours eating their grass. Uh, they've moved in wholesale. Um, Next door, they have a lot of maize cover crops. Uh, they finished those off now, so of course the wheat up the top, that's getting up to about a foot, nearly a foot tall. So it's ideal. We just come out here in the evenings just to have a right old fill up. Um, we've been seeing a lot of deer up there. I won't say numbers, but we have been seeing a lot of deer up there. We have shot quite a few. Um, we have put some, we had some old leftover peas in the shed, um, and we had some apples as well. I've, I've been donated. Uh, some had some apples in a coal store they want to get rid of, so we put them up there as well to buy, and put them by the high seats to make, make the job a bit more easier, really, to attract them to where we are and uh, make it a safe shot. How do, mate? You haven't still shot a deer on the first channel? No, David. It's because you come along and you are a bad, what is it, omen? I think that's the posh word. Yeah, you're a bad omen. I'd use a different word, but on camera I have to say omen. Andy's friend Justin takes one high seat down the valley and Andy is at the top. Both have had plenty of deer visiting. The apples and peas attract all sorts of guests. Pheasant and fox enjoy the free food. This is close to the spot where David had one of his most memorable stalks with Dom a few years ago. Two bucks submerged in the ripe wheat. If you can put six bullets in your thumb now, and hey. hundred yards. You should be able to put a bullet in your on a deer. And if you're confident you're going to hit it in the head, you're going to hit it in the head. Um, thing is here, if they're further out, I will go for a shoulder shot. Because um, I can pick them up in the field. But if they go back into the next door, they don't really like us going back in there. They will let me go back and pick up. But we've got roadie dandrons, we've got fallen fur in there, the chance to find them. And that's why I usually go for a head shot. If you know your deer, you know when they're going to move anyway. There'd be loads of people commenting on this aspect and say, oh, you shouldn't be doing this, you shouldn't be doing that, but same with anything. That's how I'm confident I'm going to hit it in the head and I haven't had one run on yet, touch wood, and it may happen one day, but just, let's just hope it doesn't. As the light fades, we see a youngster on the other side of the field. Andy texts Justin as it is heading his way, but there is no shot to be heard. We hear footsteps in the woods behind us, but nothing shows itself. 
Then half a dozen again head left to right. It is frustrating knowing that there isn't long before the fallow bucks are out of season. At last light, we hear a shot. We did hear a shot from Justin, so that's pretty obvious. That's a, you don't very often miss the old boy, so um, that'd be one for me to grolic out in a minute back at the farm. Unless he shot a fox, but those deer were hot. Watched them, they went over the top of the hill down in his direction, so it sounded good anyway, so we're just going to make our way down and get that one top and tailed. Justin has a young spiker on the deck, just 50 metres from his high seat. When you are a farmer, it helps to have big machinery to take the strain. Not everyone has a telehandler, but most people should be using gloves. Andy's grallicking tip is to use two gloves on each hand. Double bagging means if the knife slips, there's much less chance of a nasty cut. With the clock ticking before the end of the season, Andy will be out again, and so will we.